This is the Less Insurance Dependence Podcast Show with my good friend Gary Takas and myself, Narain Arul Raja. We appreciate your listenership, your time, and most of all, we appreciate your intention to reduce insurance dependence in your practice. Our goal is to provide information that will help you successfully reduce insurance dependence and convert your practice into a thriving and profitable dental practice that provides you with personal, professional, and financial satisfaction. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Less Insurance Dependence Podcast, the official podcast of the Reducing Insurance Dependence Academy, www.rid.academy. Please consider this an invitation to become a member of RIDA as a gift from us in appreciation for your listenership. This is Narain, your co-host. Today's podcast is titled, Are There PPO Plans That Do Not Pay Out-of-Network Benefits? Are there PPO plans that do not pay out of network benefits? This is an important question that Gary has been getting recently. So we're going to dive deep into it. But before I get into today's topic, I wanted to make a quick announcement. We have a famous masterclass coming up, our marquee masterclass. It's called Six Steps to Successfully Resign from PPO Plans. It's happening on the 27th of July, and it's a three hours of CE. So Gary runs it like a workshop. It's a live a webinar where you get to ask Gary questions. He will literally walk you through the six steps with literally to-dos that you can take and act on the next day you go back to work. The link is lessinsurancedependence.com slash masterclass. Because we run it like a workshop, we limit attendance. If you are interested, it's very affordable, less than $90. Please uh, sign up. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Gary, what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I'm excited about this upcoming masterclass, uh, the six steps to successfully resign from PPO plans. It has um, become unintentionally, it's become our flagship masterclass. Uh, it's the one that we get most inquiries about. Uh, and it's become our flagship. Um, and in that masterclass, uh, I'm going to go through a, quite literally a blueprint for you to follow to successfully resign from PPO plans. Uh, as indicated in the title, there's six steps. Uh, and with our experience in working with clients, uh, these six steps uh, are quite literally your blueprint. And we'll walk through each one of those and you'll be armed with everything you need um, to uh, go down that path. And, you know, if I think about the kind of uh, doctors that attend that masterclass, they kind of fall into three different categories. One category would be uh, doctors that are absolutely, they've made the decision to, to resign from PPO plans. Now they want to know how to do it most successfully. That's one, one group. Uh, a second group would be uh, docs that want to learn more. They, they, they really are drawn to uh, dropping PPO plans, but they're not quite sure if, if it's right for them. Um, and they, they will attend this masterclass as a way of kind of uh, determining if that strategy is right for them. And then there's a third group that are just curious. Uh, it's like, man, they, they feel the effects of PPO plans. They know how it's hurting them, uh, but they aren't quite sure. They'd like to learn more. Well, if you fit into any of those three categories, come join us. Uh, it, it'll be time well spent, investment well made. You'll get three hours of CE, uh, probably the least expensive CE you'll ever, you'll ever obtain. Uh, less than ninety dollars. Uh, come join us, and uh, you will have a blueprint uh, that you can put on your your tool belt and uh, successfully resign from PPO plans. I look forward to seeing you there uh, again. Lessinsurancedependence dot com forward slash masterclass. Thank you, Gary. The topic today is: Are there PPO plans that do not pay out of network benefits? This is the question, like I mentioned earlier, that has been coming up quite a bit. But the good news is there aren't many. It's a tiny, tiny fraction. Gary's going to jump into that. And he's also going to share lots of strategies today on you know, how to work with this and how to even go on the offense. So Gary, I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Yeah, this is going to be one of those detailed uh, podcasts. Um, and uh, I think it's an important uh, question to answer. Are, you know, are there PPO plans that do not pay out of, uh, out of network benefits? Well, let me start uh, by explaining PPO plans. Um, there's two types of PPO plans. 
Um, one type, which is the vast, vast, vast majority of plans, uh, are called open panel plans, open panel plans. What that means uh, is that patients can go wherever they want, and their PPO uh, plan, the insurance, will pay benefits to out-of-network providers, or they'll pay directly to the patient. They will pay benefits, and they're called open panel plans. Vast majority of, of, of dental PPO plans are open panel plans. However, there's a very, very, very small minority um, of the other type of plan, which are called closed panel plan. Closed panel means that the patient, the only way the patient can get any benefits from the policy is to go to an in-network provider, an in-network provider. If they, if they go outside of network, the plan will not pay any benefits either to the provider or to the patient. Um, those are very unusual, uh, very, very unusual. However, they do exist out there. And that's why we wanted to cover this uh, in this podcast episode. Because, you know, when we're talking about, you know, the heads up conversation, Aaron, you've heard me talk about the heads up conversation. Yes. When we have the heads up conversation. You know, we like to say, you know, even once we're no longer contracted with your insurance, you can still come here. Whatever benefits have, you can use here. Um, we'll file your claims for you like we always have. And we'll be on your side to help you get every dollar of benefit you have. Now, most of what I said was true if you're in a closed panel plan with one exception, whatever benefits you have, you can use here. So I want to give, you know, give you a heads up. There are these stray plans. Um, recently, uh, I discovered one. It was a very unusual Delta plan for state of Illinois employees. It was a particular Delta. You know, not all Delta plans are the same. That's a, that's a myth. But the plans can be wildly different within the provider. Um, and so this was a very unusual state of Illinois employee Delta plan that does not pay out of network benefits. Um, I found it in another situation in Colorado, um, another particular type of Delta plan. This was called Delta clear, Delta clear. And again, does not pay any out-of-network benefits. Now, the, out of, the, the best way for me to explain the out-of-network uh, situation, you know, the, the open panel versus closed panel, is um, Medicaid, uh, Medicare, Medicaid. Um, Medicare is a closed panel plan. If you are not a Medicare provider, Medicare will not pay you any benefits, nor will they pay the patient any benefit. The only way the patient can get benefits is to go to a Medicare provider. Now, could that patient still choose your office for your care, Naren? Absolutely. But what would be the consequences of that? You mean um, the if patient. a patient? Yeah. Uh, so if it's a Medicaid patient, uh, of course, you know, they're going to pay out of pocket. So they have to pay everything themselves. Everything. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the same situation with this very unusual state of Illinois employee plan mm -hmm. and this Delta Clear plan in, in Colorado. Same situation. They can still come there. Right. But what does that mean? They have to pay the entire amount, whatever the cost of dentistry is, out they of their own for. pocket. Yeah. Yes. And now what I what I advise my clients as we're going through that and we're looking at this in detail, we rarely see that. Um, the vast majority of time, every plan they're in is an open panel plan where patients can come there. But when it does come up, I tell my client, let, let's take a worst case scenario and assume you're going to lose all of those patients. Now, I don't like that message, <laughs> but I think in terms of our planning and our thinking and our strategy to shift marketing and what might happen in the practice, let's plan it as you're likely to lose those patients. Because it used to be free for the hygiene appointment and now they have to pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, however, what we could do, there's a couple of things we could do with those patients, I'm, you know, because this might come up in any of our listeners, it may come up. It'd be unusual, be very, very unusual. Um, but if it did come up, one of the things we could do is we can encourage the patient to uh, shift to your in-office membership plan. You know, so Naren, if you were the patient, you might say, Naren, um, you know, one thing you might want to consider um, is uh, no longer you know, using your insurance from, you know, from the state of Illinois. Um, and in fact, 
um, purchase our in-office membership plan. And I think you might find that that might be a whole lot better for you. And then I'd explain what the in-office membership plan is. Now, interestingly enough, as I was going through this with our client in Colorado that had that clear, one of the things we learned is that every single patient on this clear plan purchased their own dental insurance. Mm. In other words, it was not provided by the employer. And uh, by the way, the, the uh, annual fee the, the premium fee, and this were, these were individuals that were buying their own insurance. In other words, it wasn't provided by their employer. Right. Now, um, we discovered in this situation that the uh, their annual fee for a premium on that insurance was $628. Fairly significant. Yes. And I said, and you they're know, paying it out of pocket, right? So they're pocket. already spending the money like on their own. Yeah. Yeah. And now, uh, the office is providing an office membership plan that's going to be significantly less expensive with a much better uh, uh, benefits. Yeah. A much better, no, you know, no exclusions, no annual limit, um, no gamesmanship, no delays in payment. I mean, it's all, it's much better. Right. And when I shared that with this, this office, a client of ours in Colorado, um, uh, it's a large practice. Uh, the doctors, we we're on a Zoom meeting and, and the doctors unanimously said, Carrie, I think we can get all of these Delta Clear patients to convert to our membership plan. Right. So I'm sharing that with you because I don't want to just throw the towel in like the surrender towel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, oh, well, uh, you know, there is a way to keep them. Um, and, and that also applies to any of your patients that are buying their own insurance. Mm. Uh, or, you know, sometimes um, an employer will make it available. And then it's paid for by the employee in the form of a payroll deduction. Right. So a good question to ask is, Naren, do you pay for your dental insurance benefits at your employer? Or does the employer provide that to you as a benefit? Great question. And the, the patient might say, well, you know, last time I looked at my pay stub, I see a deduction for insurance. I think I'm paying for that myself. Right. And if that's the case, then you can say, Naren, I think you'd be better off opting out of that insurance. And let me tell you about our membership plan, because it's a whole lot better. Right. Now, many and times, less expensive, <laughs> less expensive. Many times, um, it is provided as an as an employee benefit. You know, uh, this is just this, this just got thrown in <laughs> right. know, as, as a benefit. And if that's the case, one thing we need to be clear about, the patient cannot have uh, an employer plan and your membership plan. That's, but in your experience, uh, what percentage of these plans are closed plans where you know it, they won't pay benefits if, if you're a small fraction one percent all right uh it's a it's it's a you know a, a tenth of one percent i mean it, it uh, it's virtually non-existent right but it does come up now and again and that's right. why i want to make sure none of our listeners ever get sideways with the patient you know if you're saying well you can still come here you can use our benefits here Right. Um, and, and the simple way to find out if you have a question about it uh, is to contact the PPO plan and ask, is this an open panel plan or is it a closed panel plan? Yeah. And they have to tell you that. And then you can also ask if the patient chooses to go out of network, do you continue to uh, pay benefits? Right. Uh, whether it be to us or to your patient. And they have to answer that question. And then you find out. It's very unusual, but, it, but it's one of those things that um, it's a bit of a unicorn. It, 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 hardly ever exists, but once what we do see one. Uh, and then if that's the case, then you're, you'll be armed now uh, with, with how you might handle it. Uh, I was going to say, uh, we are talking about such a tiny percentage of those patient base, right? Like less than 1%. The better idea is to go on the offense and like attract people who are looking for a good quality dentist using Google and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, and it's so, I, I noticed the, um, uh, the understanding with my clients when I say we need to replace Delta with Google. Right. And they always look at me with big eyes, like, of course, where would I want to get patients today from Delta or from Google? Well, I want to get them from Google. Yeah. When I get, get it from, from Delta, Google, I'm paying taxes, right? 35, 40, 40, well, 45, 50. No, you're, you're paying a massive tax yes. on Google. Um, the uh, On Delta. On Delta. Um, you know, when someone chooses you um, because of Google, it means they're looking at um, qual uh, qualitative reasons to choose you. Exactly. Uh, maybe they uh, see you as an expert in providing this service because of your landing pages that show cases 
Um, maybe they're choosing you because you're an office that embraces technology. And it's very clear by looking at your website. Hey, this is, I want a state-of-the-art office and this is what I'm looking at. By the way, if you go to um, the Delta website um, and it lists, lists the providers and you're just looking at the names, how much yeah. do you know about those providers? Nothing. Um, I mean, they could be the best or they could be the worst. You don't know anything about them. Literally, now, you, you could go nothing. to their website and find out. But at that point, you know nothing. You, they yeah. just, they take the coupon. <laughs> You know, yeah, take, exactly. It's like these are the people, where, these are the places you can use my coupon pretty much. Yeah. But imagine someone that was seeking you out, um, maybe uh, maybe because they have an orientation towards biological dentistry. I'm exactly. just using that as an example. Right. Or they'd like to go to a doctor that uh, has credentials in providing cosmetic dentistry. Or they'd like to go to an office that has a full range of services because they don't want to travel to a bunch of different providers to have dental care done. You know, there's all kinds of cool reasons. Reviews, right? Like some doctors might have so many glowing reviews and they want amazing care. And they you know, let's say an office has over a thousand reviews. Now there is no patient on the planet that's yeah. going to read a thousand reviews. But let's say that mom who's looking for the dentist um, reads the first three or four reviews. And it's clear these are long, you know, long format love letter reviews. And, and by the way, one of the things that it's mentioned in these reviews is the care here is always so comfortable so comfortable. And people say that in different ways. And they think in their head, you know, I want to go to an office where the care is comfortable. That's my office. Now right. they're choosing you because of comfort, not not because you just happen to be on the list. Yeah, there are studies now that show that even people on specific plans, 80% of the time, they're using Google to make their decision who they're going to go to. So they're not looking at the directory. They're not, you know, like coming to you because of the plan. They're coming to you because you are good. And they saw you. Yeah, this yeah how people how people make any decision today, whether whether it's a service or a product or they want more information, we go to Google. Yeah, you know, Google becomes that that source. Uh, so, hey, if any of our listeners want to learn more about how how to replace Delta with Google, I'd suggest they uh, schedule a marketing strategy meeting there with with your firm with Equa with Lila uh, and Lila will. Um, uh, tell you what's working about your website, what isn't working, uh, and share with you a plan that will allow you to uh, replace Delta as a source of patients with Google. If you'd like more information about that, uh, schedule a marketing strategy meeting. Uh, you've provided that free to our listeners. Um, it's www.equa.com forward slash MSM. And that stands for marketing strategy meeting. Well, I'm glad we're having this discussion with our podcast uh, listeners because it's an important detail. And it's one that you may, now, now many times this is an academic discussion, it'll never come up, but now you'll know, because the last thing in the world we'd ever want to do, Naren, would be to uh, misinform a patient. Oh, you can come here and you can use those benefits here. I wouldn't want that to, if that was not the case, I don't want to misinform, nor would any of our listeners want to mislead a patient into thinking that was the case. So now you know about the two types of plans, open panel and closed panel. And perhaps now uh, you can become more proactive about attracting people in the most powerful way to attract people, which is through Google. Well, Aaron, hey, thanks for helping me host, host this podcast. Thanks for all the work that you and your team do at Equa to not only support life smiles, but to help dentists uh, all over the country master the world of digital marketing. Also want to thank our listeners. We appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, a request, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, hit the subscribe button on wherever you get your podcast, uh, your whatever podcast directory you listen to. Hit subscribe to uh, Less Insurance Dependence Podcast. And what that means is that every Thursday when we upload a new mep episode, it'll be automatically uploaded to your listening device so you'd never miss a future episode. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Naren and I look forward to connecting with you on the next Less Insurance Dependence Podcast. <laughs>